I was so depressed. I was waking up. The first thing I would do was take this drug called Valium, right? Which is like a sleeping pill, but people use it as antidepressants. And bear in mind, I'm waking up in darkness. I'm waking up at 6 p.m. All of a sudden that stopped working. So then it became, I had to take two in one go. Then I had to take three in one go. The place I was in mentally, I couldn't see a world where I'd turn it around. And the reason that hurt the most is because everyone believed in me so much growing up. And my family believed in me so much growing up. And I even thought I was gonna do great things. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Tire Camel Podcast, the number one platform for sharing stories worth telling. So if that's your kind of jam, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Today, we have a special guest, man. Um, a TikTok sensation who captivated millions by igniting self-improvement through ice baths. From battling severe depression to now a paid motivational speaker and highly sought after influencer working with the likes of Nike. He's Manchester's rainy ice bath king, Holmes. <laughs> welcome to the podcast, brother. Oh uh, my guy, that's the best introduction I've had. Is it? By far, <laughs> thank you for that. You might have to send me that. <laughs> <laughs> well deserving, brother. Oh, uh, thank you. You're, you're taking um, social media by storm at the moment, man. Do you know what I mean? Only a year ago, as mentioned in the intro, or a couple of years ago, you, you were rock bottom, mm. you know what I'm saying? And then now look at you, man, that you've turned it all around. And I think your story is gonna be inspiring too bear people out there bro do you know what i'm saying yeah still kind of crazy to me you know just hearing that put into words like yeah it's true yeah a couple of years ago was rock bottom yeah and now like this is part of my day-to-day -day life doing things like this or being paid to help others speak about my experiences but yeah just the first thing that comes to mind when you say that is like i'm grateful all that badness that i did and all them low moments yeah when i was really look back and you know, I, I wasn't doing good things. It, I'm grateful that I can actually put that to some good use. And it yeah. shows that it wasn't time wasted because now I've got all that experience and, I, and I've been able to use it for good. So yeah, I'm 100% and people scratching their heads, bad things, what are you talking about? Yeah. Don't worry guys, we're gonna get into it in a second. <laughs> um, so yeah, for, for those who haven't come across your content, um, how would you describe what you do? I'll just say, I'm on a mission to change the world and that comes in very different forms. Uh, I'm a creative person in general, so one day I might have an urge to do an ice bath video. Next day, I might have learned something about nutrition and I wanna post about stop eating sugar and then I'll, I'll hear about something else. So it's nice because it's kind of like a dream job for me. It's however I feel on that day, or whatever I've learned about how we can get to our ideal selves, uh, that is just something then I share with the world. So how would I describe in one sense what I do is just creating freely with the intention to change someone's life on an individual level and then hopefully on a global level when all of them numbers add up. Wow, that's amazing, bro. And that's your Instagram bio, right? I'm on a mission to change yeah, the world. That's right. That's the mission. That's the yeah, mission, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So let's take it a little bit back. How would you describe your childhood and upbringing? And I'll, I'll clarify why I'm asking that question. But how would you describe it growing up? I'd say it was, it was beautiful. You know, it was, uh, I had a, had a great upbringing looking back. I never struggled with mental health. I was always in the football teams, you know, always like, you know, the best at footy, scoring bare goals, playing striker. Um, parents loved me, always believed in me a lot. And um, I was high performing at school uh, in an educational sense. Obviously I was always getting in trouble and things like that, but that's just standard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, looking back, uh, there's, there's nothing really that I can complain about. Um, Alhamdulillah, very grateful for that, for my upbringing and very grateful to not have experienced anything uh, mental health wise. Uh, I was very confident, very popular. Um, sometimes a little bit too confident, like now looking back, knowing what I know, it's like, yeah, defo egotistical. But I think as a kid, that can easily happen. You're just living in the present moment uh, and you're letting loose. And I, I definitely did that and just, yeah, still managed to misbehave, but still perform well. And so pretty, say, pretty much a normal upbringing, you would normal, say? Normal, normal, defo, defo. And good parents, back home, yeah, everything. Yeah, 100% yeah. and uh, brought up as like, proper Muslim family yeah. always adhere to the rules in Islam as well. Um, and my life was just very well put together because of that as well. I feel like, you know, if you follow our religion, you avoid a lot of negative things coming into your life. And because I followed the religion, and um, cause uh, you know, growing up, you often don't have a choice. It was 
But yeah, it was very nice for me. Yeah. You know, there was no issues really. Yeah, so the reason why I asked about your childhood mm. is because, you know, at some point you went off the rails, mm. you can say, right? So I'm, I was just curious, how, like, how does a confident, popular, good looking guy like yourself fall into a trap of depression and all that kind of stuff? The short answer? Yeah. Drugs and substance abuse. That's the short answer. Um, I think when your brain is still developing to play around with things like class A drugs and to play around with uh, alcohol even, you're kind of asking for it. Um, there's a reason these things are forbidden in, in a law sense, in a religion sense, in a olders will tell you to stay away from that. There's, there's a reason for that. Yeah. So what, what made you experiment? Because you had a good upbringing, as you mentioned, mm. right? What made you experiment with that side of things? What was, was it curiosity? Was it peer pressure? I think there came a point where I was, there came a point where I began to rebel against my upbringing, uh, against uh, culture and religion. So I went to a school in my area, Wally Range. Yeah. Um, and then I got into like the, the best school for, for boys in, in Manchester, I went to Manchester Grammar. Um, so I got into there on a, on a sports and academic scholarship. So this is like a big deal. I never really wanted to go there. I wanted to stay with all my mates and go to, it was actually William Hume was my primary. Right. And then I wanted to stay on there, but my parents like, you know, they wanted me to aim higher. So they told me to do the entrance exams, got in. And then I remember on, on the day I got in, I was like crying because I didn't want to go and they were crying because of happiness. And then, <laughs> um, wow. yeah, yeah. And then they ended up sending me there and, um, it was great, but yeah. it was, uh, you could say it was a mistake in one way from them because they, they hadn't anticipated what could happen. And there was, wasn't many Pakistani people in my year. Uh, it was mainly um, white, yeah, mainly white people um, who obviously just had a different cultural upbringing. Yeah, it's interesting, man, because I was just thinking like, you know, what, cause I've got children myself, what draws people to that side of things? And I thought about it and it's like, you know, that lifestyle is packaged in a beautiful way, whether you're going to festivals, whether you're going to clubs, it's got like a allure to it, do you know what I mean? Like it's mm. got a little of a pull to it. But the reality is, and looking at your journey, you have to detach your things from these things because to be successful or to be the best version of yourself, you need to like not go clubbing, not do drugs, which obviously you realize and mm. stuff like that, which we'll, we'll get into in a second. Um, so that was interesting. That's what that's the only reason why I'm asking is just like, what is it that's attracted you to it? What made you fall into it? Like yeah. I said, you had everything going for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, what attracted me to it is you, you got to remember like you kind of are a product of your environment. Yeah. It's very normal for 15 year old people in this country to experiment. And that isn't spoken about enough. People try and shy away from the real truth of what is going on in this country. Yeah. Is that yeah. It's so normal, even younger than when we left school, we are hearing about kids in 12 year old now, 13 year old, they have a drug problem. And remember that's in the best school in the top 5% school in the country. And that's happening. So imagine what might be happening in other schools. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it's a very big issue. It's very normal for <laughs> kids to be experimenting. Uh, maybe it wasn't as normal for a Muslim person to be experimenting, but then now knowing what I know from other people reaching out to me, actually it is also normal. Yeah. Uh, it does happen a lot. I'm just the only one who comes out and speaks about it so openly, which people can criticize me for whatever, but I know overall there's a net gain for society. There's a net gain for, um, even young Muslims, because they reach out to me like, bro, like, thank you for being so open and honest. Like, I've had a tough time. Like, I've been experimenting and I feel so guilty and no one really understands it from my perspective. And now you've told me when you've stopped all that, yeah. your life got better. Yeah. So yeah, I I'm glad I, I do what I do and I speak openly about it. But what attracted me to it, it wasn't like a, some concrete decision. It just, I just fell into it because of yeah. who I was surrounded by. That's probably the main thing. That doesn't make them worse than anyone else. That was, like I said, is normal. And then it was fine because I was only a weekend defender because I was in school Monday to Friday. So then it was only the weekends we'd go out, we'd, we'd take drugs, we'd do whatever and have some late nights. And this is where my family did start to sort of distance themselves in yeah. a way, our yeah. relationship, I guess broke down a little bit, right. but because I was still performing well in school, yeah. I was still in the good books, really. Yeah. I was still, you know, trialing for Man United and stuff like this in football. I was still in the good books as well. So it was all right until it went on and on. And then in college, still did okay. Not as good as I did when I was younger, because at this point now, yeah. I had done damage to my brain. Yeah, I was so, gonna ask you, yeah. what, what sort of effects did it have on you? Like doing all that craziness? 
sharpness. Yeah. It was my brain started to slow down. And where my anxiety started was when I realized that my brain had slowed down because all of a sudden I went from confident, outgoing mm. Mm. to I'm thinking about what I'm about to say now because I wasn't as sharp, I wasn't as funny. I didn't have like my natural wit, charisma or whatever. It kind of gone yeah. because I like my brain wasn't functioning the same. And then when I realized that I had this massive pressure on myself in my head that I had to still appear that I was this confident guy, but I knew inside oh, I was kind of struggling now. Yeah. Like, and I noticed it mostly when I spoke to um, my friend's parents, for example, um, and I was just like trying to hold a conversation with them. And I realized like, hold on a sec, bro, you're stiff. Like, why can't I even get these words out no more? And then I realized it because of the damage I'd done to my brain. And that, that's where my anxiety started. Cause then I was like, people are noticing, but I still have to appear a certain way. And then I was in this endless loop. So then I ended up taking more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. And that's, I guess where it started. You got into like a vicious cycle. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then basically, yeah, as you put it, is you felt you, you started to notice the damage and stuff like exactly. that in your brain. Exactly. What would you say the turning point was to turning it all around? Bro, that anxiety cycle went on for years. Oh really? Went on for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From so like- So how, how old were you at this point? 18 so when you leave college it's probably 18 yeah yeah uh and then i had a gap year that was my one of my lowest moments i thought it couldn't get any worse then i went to uni it got even worse and then even in my second year uni because i then i failed my first year so right. then there's like even more horrible moments uh and in, in them years of anxiety and, and depression uh there were so many catastrophic l's so many police failing uni parents cut me off yeah so many things uh, went wrong um so that went on for a good four years yeah because you were in. you were you were documenting your journey as well like if you look on your instagram now there's a story of you in 2019 as well mm. saying i've given up mm. what were you going through at, at that time and what made you take that picture as well yeah i'd given up uh, around that time 2019 because i felt like i'd now failed my first year at uni and the place I was in mentally, yeah, I couldn't see a world where I'd turn it around. And the reason that hurt the most is because everyone believed in me so much growing up and my family believed in me so much growing up and I even thought I was gonna do great things. But it got to the point where the effort I knew it would take to turn everything around and to actually get to a, a level where I'm performing again, uh, mentally and academically and these kind of things. I just thought, there's no way, bro. I just thought, there's, there's no way I'll be able to do that. And I, and I couldn't see a world where it would happen because I was addicted to taking stuff now. It's like, I needed, I was in uni, bro. Yeah. I was waking up. The first thing I would do was take this for, take this uh, drug called Valium, right? Which is like uh, a sleeping pill, but people use it as antidepressants. It's a bit like Xanax. Right. It's a bit like a, a bit less version of that, but it's more or less the same thing. I was so depressed that I'd roll over and bear in mind I'm waking up in darkness. I'm waking up at 6 p.m. That, mm. that was my routine. Mm. I go to bed at something like 11 a.m. I wake up at 6 p.m. Feel like I, I can't do this no more. And I have to take this like Xanax pill, Valium. Yeah. To even be able to get out of bed and function. And then all of a sudden that stopped working. So then it became, I had to take two in one go. Then I had to take three in one go. So. Yeah, that, that's that's really how far I fell at, at that time. So you went pretty deep in the rabbit hole, man. Really deep, bro. And that's why I thought, if I'm here now and I can't even get out of bed unless I'm taking something, how on earth am I gonna go and achieve anything and, and turn things around? Like, how am I gonna do that? That's why I say I'd given up. And now you asked before, like, okay, where and when did it turn around? Yeah. And it was the first COVID lockdown. That's so when it turned around, everything. Yeah, so like, for example, with Tyson Fury, mm. he comes to a point about to kill himself despite having the millions and kids and stuff like that. One day he said to himself, that's it, I've had enough. I said, I'm making this change today. During lockdown, did you have one of those moments where you thought, you know what, I'm making this change today. Enough it, is enough. It was exactly a light bulb moment and I can pinpoint the exact moment, which is the craziest thing. And, and it was as simple as a video got recommended to me on YouTube. Yeah. And that was the video which changed everything. And it was just hearing that the, there was a way, hearing that there was a way 
to reprogram my mind. Yeah, yeah. And that would then change my outcomes in my life. Just hearing that there's a possibility. Hope. Yeah. And now that's why I do what I do, because I know that one video of mine could be that light bulb moment for someone. And it has been for so many people. Yeah. So it's like, wow, you have to come out and share your experiences because you don't know that could be someone's light bulb moment. And then that would have a knock on effect of them changing other people's lives. So yeah, it was that one moment in the first COVID lockdown was my light bulb moment. And I then became obsessed with self-improvement, not just that guy's particular stuff, who's Dr. Joe Dispenza, yeah. his books, his meditations. Then I became Wim Hof. Then I learned about cold exposure. Then I became obsessed with nutrition. Then I read a book about all the vitamins and minerals that we need. I just became obsessed. Um, and all of a sudden my new drugs that I needed a hit from were natural highs. And um, I think a big part of it as well, being COVID lockdown was there was nowhere to go out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I'm really glad that you're sharing your experience and I don't want to put it down on the podcast, but the reason I'm going so deep into it is because I want people that are going through what you're going through now, uh, sorry, back then, and thinking to themselves, you know what, that's exactly how I feel right now. That's what I'm going through right now. Hold on, homes can change. Mm. And he's just like smashed it, working with Nike now, doing gigs, podcasts, stuff like that. I want them to hear that and think, wow, take inspiration from you. Do you get it, bro? Yeah, 100%. And like a big part of my mission is to show people exactly what you just said. Yeah. It is possible. It is so possible. And I did it all naturally. And I did it all myself. It is possible to bring yourself out of the lowest low. And the, I even hold back some of the lows because I'm still not comfortable enough to share yeah. the lowest lows. But there, there was, I like, I've said this in other podcasts, I had given up yeah. to the extent where, yeah, I wasn't bothered if I lived or not. That was, that was the level yeah. that it got to and worse. So I do want anyone watching this who feels like there's no hope, who feels like the, to pull themselves out of the place they're in, it wouldn't be possible yeah. and they've given up that. It's never too late, man. 100% man. And it's good that you recognize that you can change. The first step I think is the, what's a good message out there is that you can change, but you gotta take accountability. Mm. You gotta take responsibility. No one's gonna come and save you. Bro, you know what's mad? Yeah. I was literally on my way here. That exact thought came into my mind and I was going to post an Instagram story. I don't know if you see like sometimes yeah. whatever's on my mind, I'll, I'll just yeah. give a little dose of knowledge to it, my yeah. Instagram stories, right? Yeah. And the exact message I was going to give today was that was one day I realized that no one's going to come and save me. That's right. And one day I realized that if I carry on being a bum, everyone's just going to forget about me. Then I'm going to die and I'm going to have no legacy. And that's just that. No one is gonna care. They're all gonna be going off into their own lives, being successful, and I'm gonna be left there as a bum. And I can't have that. Uh, I need to make sure that, yeah, I, there's, there's a story that I can look back and be proud on. And then also my kids, like to me, that's a big deal. And then just my family in general. And that's, that's the reason I do everything that I do is like, I'm now indebted to my family because I put them through the worst thing ever for so many years that now I have to turn it around and bring all this to them so they can see this is the kid that we raised and this is why we invested so much energy and love into you growing up, sent you to that school and wanted the best for you. It was so you can go and achieve great things and, and change the world. So. That's yeah. why I do what I do. You mentioned something interesting earlier, bro, that come into my mind as well, that you said there was no hope, you felt like there was no hope and you felt like the effort to turn it around would be absolutely too much for you. But you did it, right? You did turn it around, you know what I'm trying to say? So I was wondering, bro, what was the process of change? What's the process of change that you would advise to people in that situation? What's the starting process? Where would you like start them off? Okay, this is a great question. I think um, it's gonna be the most value will be taken out of this section because it's like, you're right. I've said a lot in, in maybe in previous podcasts, in, in videos, here's, here's what I did, I managed to turn it around, but you're right, how? What are the first step, right? Yeah. So I would say for anyone in a low moment who feels like there's no hope and like you said, they might be thinking the energy it would take to turn things around and become a success is too much and they can't see it being possible. The first step I would say is nutrition. People don't realize this, right? Wow. But we are so low on the on the vitamins and minerals that we actually need for our body to perform 
at a normal level, yeah. never mind a level that's thriving, there's certain minerals and certain amounts, certain vitamins, certain amounts that we need to be every organ and our brain and our sharpness and our energy level yeah. to be high performing. That's so interesting. That, I'm surprised about your, that's your first answer. How mad, I know. Yeah, and yeah. everyone thinks I'm gonna say ice bath yeah, first. Yeah, no, yeah. it's like the, the actual truth is, nutrition was the first thing for me. Right. Um, that was, you know, even when I said that was my light bulb moment with that book and the meditation. Yeah. It, it was like that sparked my interest in health and wellness in general. And then before I could have the brain power to read this book, yeah. I needed to stabilize myself with vitamins. Of course, you need to absorb the information, exactly, right? Yeah. ready to take it in. Yeah, exactly. So how would I go from someone who couldn't read a book and finish a book and meditate to all of a sudden someone who did? It wasn't a magic switch. It was, okay, I quickly learn about what vitamins and minerals that I needed. And right. then I ended up buying them. And, um, just did a little bit of research into that. And all of a sudden, I had brought back some of my energy. I had some brain power, mm. finally, mm. because all I've been eating was processed carbs, processed this, take away this, sugar, refined sugar. How do you expect to turn things around? How do you think you, you can have the energy needed to go from rock bottom to whatever it is, element of success you're trying to achieve if you don't have even the simple uh, requirements of your diet, the simple things that can unlock your energy a little bit, but your energy is being sapped by all this food you're eating. Yeah. Everything in the supermarket, more or less, if you actually go into it, it has got something in it, which isn't ideal for us to be eating, right? But that's another conversation. Mm, mm. So the first step, nutrition. The first nutrition. step, stabilize yourself, get some energy back to yourself with simple dietary shifts, right? And then obviously someone will ask, well, what exactly? And this is where you do need to go and do your research because it's like, I could go on for ages about that specific thing. But firstly- What are the basics? Basics, vitamins and minerals. Go and, go and research what vitamins and minerals we need. And at the very least, there's vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K, vitamin E, DAKE, yeah? D-A-K-E, vitamin DAKE, right? Right. That's what every human needs as a, as a bare minimum. Yeah. Especially because we're brown, we need even more vitamin D. Yeah, yeah. You know that already. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that now, <laughs> yeah, to be fair. Uh, the minerals, there's loads, but you can eat sea moss, which has a bunch, I hate a lot about sea moss. a bunch of minerals. Yeah. A bunch of minerals. So sea moss, 92 out of 102 minerals, that will give you a lot and you feel already energetic. Don't eat breakfast, breakfast is a scam. Don't eat processed carbs, don't eat bread, bread is a scam. So do you, do you stay away from carbs totally or? No, so if I was to have carbs, I'd have rice. And also, don't get me wrong, bro. Yeah. I love a fried chicken burger. Like that's yeah, my, yeah. I, I had one yesterday. Come on. I had one yesterday, of course, bro. <laughs> yeah. And, and Manchester, have a cheat day, man. Manchester is is the capital for, for the fr spicy fried chicken standard. burger. So it's standard. Uh, here's another thing. I, I follow the 80-20 principle. Someone just taught me about that recently because it got to a point mm. where I'm feeling guilty whenever I'm breaking my good habits. But then I'm like, bro, no. 80% I'll do the right thing, 20% yeah. I'll just do whatever I want. And even mentally, that just suits me a lot more. It, yeah. And even that gives me more energy, just having that bit of lenience with myself. It makes perfect sense, bro, because the body is the vehicle that carries your mind and everything yeah. else. So you need to get that in order, get your energy up, right? So your nutrition is the first protocol. First, yeah, because once you got that, then the, the thought of finishing a book and the thought of yeah. doing your daily meditation and the thought of going to the gym won't be as scary because you have more energy. It all comes down to energy at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Yeah. When you got more energy, you feel less depressed as well. Yeah. Because you can actually do things. You can go for that run outside and you feel good. It all comes down to energy. So that's overlooked. And it may be even overlooked in my, in my content because, you know, the ice baths is the stuff that people love and, you know, I love as well. Uh, so a lot of my content is about the ice baths. But yeah, I'm glad we're doing this and we're having this combo because nutrition first. Then, yeah. Then we'll go to the next one. Then I would say... Okay, so second thing just to clarify is... Cold exposure. Cold exposure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's the thing that you can guarantee every time. If you go straight into a cold shower first thing in the morning, you're awake. And then for a little bit at least, you're going to feel better. And that's why it's so beautiful. Meditation, it's not really something where you go and meditate and now you're like, whoa, explosion, I'm wide awake. But cold exposure is like that every time. And that's why the cold exposure content did so well is because people could see a guy jumping in his wheelie bin talking about cold showers and ice baths, go and try it and feel better instantly. That's why it did so well, because 
cold showers are free. Actually, it saves you money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. On your, on your uh, water bill. Yeah. So that was the beauty of it. It's so like, that's basically a shock to the system. First mm, thing in the morning, would you say? First thing in the morning, shock to the system. And shock to the system is only one of the benefits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, But the thing why I suggest it as the next step is because of this, the only thing really where you can do and bang, instantly you feel better. And depending on how bad your mental health is, you might be in a super low moment, um, but it, it's guaranteed to make you feel better for a little bit at least. And then if you do ice baths every day, in, so let me clarify, you do every single day? No, I don't do, I do cold shower every day, no matter okay. what, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's habit. Yeah. Um, some days I go straight into the cold shower, Right. Some days I go warm and then finish it off cold. Right, Do you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously it's better to go straight into the cold. It's more difficult. The more difficult it is, the bigger battle you're winning in your head. You yeah. get me? I, I would argue the mental benefits outweigh the physical, right? Yeah. Because it's like you're doing something you don't want to do. Yeah. And yeah. that's life in itself. And it's, you know, you, it teaches you outside of that. Like you might have a project, you might want to do something, you might want to achieve something. But in order to do those steps, you need to do things that you don't want to do necessarily. And is that what it teaches you mentally? That's the biggest taken for me personally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it has been uh, delayed gratification as well. Cause you know, after 10 minutes of cold exposure, you get a 250% dopamine increase. So only at the end though. So what does that teach you for day to day life? You have to go through the, the grim, you have to push yourself through the cold yeah. or the, the tough tasks that you don't want to do. And then at the end you get your reward. That's the opposite of what things like social media are teaching a short term gratification. Right. So I do actually link my journey with taking um, cold dips and cold exposure. That is directly linked to my mentality and the reason I'm been a successful content creator because as a content creator, you can't care about the short term. You have you have to see a video is not perform well, but you keep going, but you keep going because you know in the end it's gonna do you well, just like at the end of an ice bath it's gonna do you well. So let's reprogram my brain and my body to know that no, go through the pain because at the end you're gonna get there. Hundred percent. What's the third thing? Would you say? Then I would say meditation. Meditation. Then I would say meditation is a yeah. big one. And you know, a lot of people will be like, oh yeah, but like I've tried there sitting in my room and I, it just doesn't feel natural. Here's what you do. Go get an app called Balance. It's free for a whole year. Learn how to meditate on there. It's very simple. You can start with five minutes a day, then it increases to 10 minutes a day. Do one of the programs on Balance. Oh, there's another app called Medito. There are two free apps anyone can try. And that's the introduction into meditation. There, Interesting. Done. So no more excuses. Don't yeah. give me no excuses. There you go. There are the two platforms. Yeah. Go and explore Free. them. Free. Free. Go and explore them. And yeah, you tell me you're not starting to feel better and, and not starting to notice something after you've put in a bit of consistency. So downloading is only the first step because you know a lot of people, they'll just download the app and then you're like, yeah, use it one day and then not again. Yeah. But luckily these apps have a streak and you want to keep up the streak and you see that and... So commit, commit to it. What would you say the benefits are of meditation, the long-term benefits? Is it just like mindfulness? You're more at peace, you're more stoic, you don't get stressed as easily. Is that the added benefit, would you say? You know, for me, the meditation really, uh, I got most out of the, the visualization part yes. of meditating. Yeah. So for me, yeah. the reason I say meditation is because that's where you can, if you can get into a deep meditative state, yeah, that's where you can start to reprogram your mind. And now sometimes people get a bit lost with this part of things that I talk about. Yeah, but we're going into the subconscious now, aren't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I know I'm saying meditation, right? But I'm really yeah. The reason why I'm saying is because people have the idea of just sit there for two minutes, close your mm. eyes, and that's it. Do you know what I'm yeah, going to say? Yeah, yeah. But it's deeper than that. To be when fair, when I say meditation, I'm talking subconscious mind reprogramming. Yes. And that's what I really want to make easy for people to understand yeah. is um, where meditation was beneficial for me is because I was doing specific types of meditation where I'm getting so present, where I'm, I go into my subconscious and I take out the beliefs that I don't want to have there anymore. Like I'm a loser. I'm not going anywhere. Everyone knows I'm, I'm like down in the dumps and like, and like it's game over. If you're into self-talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I go into my subconscious and then the meditate, the meditation guide would say, now all the beliefs, all the thoughts that you have that you don't want to have anymore, become aware of them, mm. become aware of them. Mm. And now, and now put all of them in a category called the old self. And now when that thought comes again, you recognize it as the old self. 
and next day you get a thought when you wake up because this is what anxiety is like oh no i don't know how i'm gonna do this today like another day where i'm gonna be wasted but now because i've learned this technique of meditation i can see that thought and be like chill yeah. that's the old self it's yeah. all good wow and then you replace yeah. that with the meditative guide would say, now visualize a person you want to be. Yeah. Now visualize all these things that that person is doing. And I'd see myself like, it's a crazy story, right? So how, how did I actually get into helping people? And how did I know that this is what I wanted to do? It was one day I was in a meditation and I was, I was deep in a meditation. And then the guide said, now visualize the person you want to be. And at that time I was visualizing myself like, you know, driving a Bentley, like with all these like riches and stuff. Cause I, that's kind of what I thought success was. But then this one meditation, right? The visualization came to me. It was a, it was a vision. And it was for the first time I saw me on stage talking to like hundreds of people. And I was talking about my story and I was helping people in my story. And it was like, I didn't, forced that visualization, it came to me, it was a vision. And I just saw that my, that was my future. And it was weird, because in that moment, I was still anxious and depressed, I was, but I was on my recovery stage. So I had no idea that I was gonna turn things around to the extent where I was gonna talk on stage. Um, yeah. I knew that God was showing me, here is your purpose. Because as much as I was turning my mental health around, I was still a bit lost, I was still a bit confused, like what is my purpose, what am I gonna do? And then that was, that was God's way of saying that here, you need to go and help people in whatever way that comes. Um, and then, yeah, it ended up coming a, a few years later, realizing, yeah, through, through TikTok will be the first way. That's sick, man. So much to unpack there, bro. So many gems yeah, in yeah, that. Yeah, You're yeah, giving yeah. practical steps. That's what I love about this as well. It's not only the, you know, uh, the motivational stuff, but you're also giving, you're being pragmatic as well. Mm. I think the third thing you mentioned there is obviously the meditation, um, but you define it very well, actually, which mm. is, go through a process of eliminating negative thoughts. And the way you can do that is write it down, maybe your old self, you said? Yeah, so literally, yeah. bro, I'm glad you said that because yeah. let's make it easy for people, right? Yeah. So how do you get rid of old beliefs and replace them with new beliefs or the person you want to be and get rid of the old anxiety and depression and same negative thought patterns? How do you do that? Yeah. Piece of paper, write down old self, underline you become aware now for a couple of days or one day, or maybe you already know, all the thoughts that you wanna leave behind, the negative thoughts, the anxiety thoughts, the depression thoughts, the this world is falling apart, I can't find my place in this world. Yeah. Um, you know, my parents don't believe in me, this, my ex is uh, broke my heart, I'm never, all them, ne any negative thought, any negatively charged thought, you gotta write that down on the page on the old self mm. these are the thoughts you want to leave behind these are the thoughts that are making you conditioned in anxiety and depression which will eventually manifest as a physical illness right so yeah. become aware of the old self that's the first step then you want to get a new piece of paper and write new self then you want to write all the thoughts you do want to think i am whole i am connected god loves me if i serve the people god will reward me abundantly all these beautiful thoughts that you do want to have. I am confident, I am strong, my family love me, um, I have a purpose, um, I, I have no worries, yeah. everything is good. So essentially you're substituting the negative for a positive. Exactly. Wow. So write all of them, these are the thoughts you do want to fire, right? Now, besides meditation, what you got to do is moment to moment, you have to be vigilant. You are now awareness. You've got to make sure you don't let one thought go by unchecked. That's the work. The meditation is only what a half an hour part of your day, maybe one hour, whatever it is. That's one bit of your day. But what about the other 23 hours? If you're going to meditate and have a good meditation, but then for the rest of the day, you're going to be thinking of, oh my God, my ex left me. Oh my God, this negativity, that. Then you're undoing all the work, my friend, undoing all of the work. You need to be vigilant, vigilant. for the whole day. Yeah. And that's not letting one thought go by unnoticed. And how that actually works day to day is, you have that thought, you recognize it's that same anxious loop, it's that same negative thought pattern loop, but now you've got this identification of that's the old self. So you see the thought and you say, change or you have your own what my what i like to do is i see the thought and say i am in control mm. and that thought goes i like that i am i am in control no no i am in control and you have a little smile say it with confidence and believe it from your heart and then over time what starts to happen you're reprogramming your brain there's nothing 
crazy or spiritual or woo woo about that. Yeah. That's science, bro. That yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. is real life proven science. You are reprogramming your brain and you don't need pills to do that. You don't need operations to do that. You just need to know, okay, old self, new self. And then how do you start reprogramming and putting the positive thoughts in there? You've got your way of uh, being aware of the negative. Now, positive thoughts, things like affirmations, things like even writing right. it down first when we record. I was going to ask you about that as well, yeah. Yeah, exactly that. And things like prayer. But the, the only way affirmations and prayer can work is if you wholeheartedly believe what you're saying. So you have to marry a clear intention, which is your affirmation, the thing that you want, yeah. with a feeling of it is done, with a feeling of faith, belief, and you have to convince your subconscious that you are that person now. Yeah, you can't be in the mirror... Um, saying I'm confident, I'm confident, but yeah. deep down you feel like shite. You can't. You can't. It, it's not gonna work, even if it? you can believe it for that moment, it, it, it's worth doing. Like yeah. you got to just tune into your heart, yeah, and say it with whatever aggression you need to say it to make sure you believe it. Like I was saying that I did this on my close friends on Instagram way before I had any TikTok numbers. Like I'll be running around London, like like all these people don't know it, but I am the guy. They don't even know it, because and none of you know it either. Yeah, but. Believe me, soon come, they're all gonna know who I am. It's yeah. mad. I was yeah. just there convinced that I knew my, my mission was so clear from God. I knew that I was walking with this raised vibration energy that it's all happened. Yeah. I've already experienced it in my visualizations. I've seen it, I've lived it and breathed it. I know it's there. So after that moment, I had that vision from God. Then all my visualizations became, I'm there with the people. I'm there, I, I've got my name in lights for the right reasons. I'm there like sharing all this knowledge and stuff like that. All my visualizations became that. So when I started making TikToks and stuff, I was never, in the come up, I was never once worried whether this was gonna work or not, not once. The biggest, threat to your dreams and your success is worry. Like that will just eat everything up because then you're sending out a, like a, a low vibration as well. I agree with that. So yeah. I there was not one moment where I doubted, is this gonna work or not? I know this is my fucking destiny. Yeah. Of course it's gonna fucking work. And I've already felt it. And also I've already lived it in my visualizations. I've felt it. I've smelt it in the visualizations. So of course mm. it's gonna work. So that's where, if you have that kind of belief, you're not thinking about things when you're creating it, you're just doing it. And that's where all the magic is, out yeah. of the thinking brain, in the, in the doing, in the feeling and believing. When you start to overthink, you know, how am I gonna edit this? Or when you start to overthink the hook of a video too much, yes, you have to work on these things. Just on that point, or, brother, um, that was gems, by the way. I yeah, love it, man. Yeah, love good, it, love like, feeling the energy, yeah, man, yeah, feeling yeah, it. Yeah. Um, just on that point, you mentioned um, don't be too rigid in some ways you're mm -hmm. saying, right? So you mentioned in another podcast that don't be too specific as well. Like let yourself go a little bit, just be a bit more free as to what you want. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that fair to say? Yeah, in terms of like manifesting things into yeah, your yeah, life. Yeah. And that. yeah, yeah. So on the one hand, some gurus will say, be as specific as possible with your manifestations. Yeah. Just design the actual job from head to toe, what you want your boss to be like, the amount of money, all of these things. But my experience of manifestation, that doesn't work. That doesn't work for me. Everyone is different. For me, as soon as I do that, I'm obsessing about it too much. And when you obsess- That's where the worry comes in yeah, that you mentioned yeah, before. Yeah. Exactly, do you know what I mean? If you, exactly. if you uh, fixating something too much, you're gonna get worried in it, which defeats the purpose. Yeah, I'm like, okay, where is this job coming from? Oh, right, it has to be 10,000 pounds, but uh, where is it gonna be? Like, is it gonna be exactly how I've designed it in this manifestation? <sighs> That's the thinking brain. The thinking brain's the enemy. We mm. need to stay out of the thinking brain. Our natural place is just to be free floating and, and not in the thinking brain and surrendering to what comes our way. That is where all the, the gems, all the beautiful things that I've manifested have all been things that I haven't set a specific intention on. If your intention is to serve, if your intention is the people and your main goal is to vibrate at the highest frequency possible, your main goal is to feel as 10, 10 as humanly possible, moment to moment. Feel whole, feel connected, feel like you are serving God's creation. Feel like you are meant to be where you are right now and everything is working in your favor. Just make that your goal, feel like that. Put yourself out there, um, create and put it out. Don't let uh, worry hold you back from doing things. If you get an instinct, that idea is from God or the universe or whatever it is, which means you should act on it right now. So there, there that's what I would say. Yeah. Make your goal how you feel moment to moment. So essentially your mental health, 
and um, make sure you're feeling like this person who's gonna go and do all them achievements. That's the key. If you wanna be like, have the biggest podcast, right? Yeah. The most successful podcast. How would that person feel moment to moment? To embody that emotion. They'd pre feel pretty fucking good. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I know I'm changing lives here. I know I've got the biggest podcast. Even the way they do everything, that's what you need to embody in every moment. And that's probably my biggest skill is manifestation, I'd say. My, yeah. my, like the biggest thing that so I've built. Just to summarize, like the first step is nutrition, mm. ice baths, mm. cold exposure, and meditation. Yeah. And coupled with that, with the affirmation you said, right? Well, let's call the la the last one manifestation. 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 You have a couple yeah. that in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, couple that in. And the reason I say meditation first is just because you need to familiarize yourself with the process of meditation first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before you can start to think about manifestation, yeah. I'd say you got to become a bit more familiar with yourself. And that's how you do that is meditation. Yeah. So that's Makes what sense. You need to be first. calm your worries down a bit. Exactly. And that's what meditation does. Yeah. Right? You can't, you can't talk to me about manifestation when you're still an anxious wreck. Wow. Like you will not manifest fuck all. I'm yeah. sorry. I keep swearing. In no, this no, podcast, it's absolutely yeah. this I just want to be myself on be this Be yourself, podcast. mate. This, yeah, this is yeah, absolutely yeah. fine. Because on the last one, I had to keep a little bit more PG, but I, I feel no, no, like no, this not one at all. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It's just my last guest, man. Yeah, just going off. Yeah, because the affirmation as well, people might say, I don't really believe in it, which you said um but here's a quote from alex Hamosi, and i wrote it down just to say it in this podcast mm. as well which might help um you don't become confident by shouting affirmations in the mirror but by having a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are wow wow that's, wow, that's wow, deep wow, in wow. it i love that quote yeah, yeah. And, and it's spot on as well i think it also brings up another nice little thing for me is which is there's a, there's a whole formula. You can't just have the affirmations or the belief side. Yeah. It's, it's faith plus action because yeah. faith without action is blind faith. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing worse than that. That's yeah. just your blindly delusional, believing. Delusional then. Delusional. You have to be somewhat delusional to make it in this world. I do believe that as well. Yeah. Like, like I said, how I was running around London saying these people don't know who I am yet. I'm, you know, maybe still not like, got any proof that I'm the guy. Yeah, yeah. But I believe it. And that's good delusion because I was acting on it at least. Yeah. But faith plus action equals your personal success. I can even add to that formula. Faith plus action plus who you surround yourself with. Mm. Plus your willingness to serve others. Plus yeah. adding value to other people's yeah. lives equals your personal success. But yeah, that, that quote is is really powerful from, from Alex Hamosi because it shows you can't just scream at yourself in the mirror and you can't just change your subconscious beliefs. You have to then go and act on it. But you'll find that once you do the program, reprogramming thing that I said, it'll be hard not to act on it because you'll be there throwing these beliefs into yourself in a meditation. You're going to come out and like, let's go. Yeah. So I'm going to just clarify because we've covered a few things there, manifestation mm. and all that kind of stuff. So for the Muslims out there that are watching, might be thinking, what is this wishy-washy stuff, mate? <laughs> you might be like, you know, you're crossing lines here. But let me just clarify. We as Muslims, obviously me and Hums are Muslims, right? Believe God is all-knowing, all-powerful, right? He created the heavens and the earth and the laws that govern the universe, right? We are All, all we're doing in this podcast is recognizing the laws the laws God has created and we utilize it to our advantage. So for example, like God says, if you are grateful, I will give you more. That's a law we're talking about. So exactly what I'm backing it with the religion. So, and he's backing it with science side of things. So, so for example, you mentioned before, replace all the negative thoughts with good ones. Right. And that's what we're saying. Look, count your blessings, man. And God will give you more what you said there with the, the manifestation and religion. Yeah. Uh, there was times where I made videos about the, the link, the synergy, and I did my research and I found quotes like what you said. Yeah. Gratitude is a massive part of Islam. Yeah. And gratitude is kind of what manifestation is all about. Manifestation is just a word for it. Also, I feel like, you know, law of attraction manifestation, people then think that means the universe, the universe, the universe. Yeah. But, but that's just one person's version of God for me. If you're a religious believer and you want to tap into manifestation, it's all for God. You're thanking God. Yeah. God's giving you these things, not the universe. So that's the the thing I would say. You just replace that. Yeah. And you manifest from the place of, oh, I'm so grateful and I can feel that God has already delivered it to me. And even the way we make du'a, um, I don't want to misquote anything, but there's something like um, feeling from your heart that God is gonna. Yeah. deliver this for you yeah. is the most effective way of making the world. And then also, bro, like 
when I, thing is, when I learned about spirituality and meditation and manifestation, it was before I'd come back to my religion. Yeah. But it was my way back to my religion. I found Islam again through learning about spirituality, which was mad because I was reading these things in books, right? Mm. And then it, as I'm reading this science, realizing that my religion been telling me this whole time. Exactly. Like, for example, yeah, yeah, I'll give yeah. you a mad example. We've been asked to pray in congregation. Like the power of what we're doing, where all of us are there praying together for the same reasons, which is just to show gratitude to our Lord. Like imagine the energy in that room, if it was measured would be mad. So that to me was showing me how beautiful my religion is. Yeah, exactly what you said. Like, you know, there's certain things that I'll be reading in personal development books um, that, I, that I found in Islam, told us years ago. Even like the prayer, bro, the first prayer is before the sun rises and all these personal development guys says, if you want to be rich, you want to be wealthy, you need to wake up early in the morning. They in have it, that, do you know it. what I mean? And there's books like, you know, um, Think and Grow Rich, which, which is a great book, by the way, but they refer to, as you said, infinite intelligence, the universe. Mm. We just skip that. We don't say that. We just refer, as you said, to God. We just link it to God. God is the one that governs all these laws. Um, and we're not associating any partners with him. Mm. So I wanted to make that clarification for the mm. Muslims out there. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's all good. So that's what I do when I read these books, just replace where they call, talk about the divine. Yeah. That for me is God or the infinite intelligence. Like you said, exactly. that, that's just God. And it's simple. Yeah. Um, anything that fits with our narrative will take. Anything that doesn't, yeah, we reject. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then other things it taught me about, um, you know, um, how we have Salah and then we make a Dua at the end. Like that's the exact order if you want to manifest something effectively and I learned in the book is to meditate, yeah. which is, you know, to become present with yourself like we do in Salah, but we become present with God. Yeah. And then after you meditate to make your affirmation then. So we have that same order, but we do, we're doing it for God. So yeah, it, it was interesting the way around it, it came yeah. for me learning this separately, but I'm obviously grateful in the way that happened because it led me back to my religion. And then also, when you just think about it, look at my life, yeah? When I did all the sinful stuff, when I used to drink and when I used to do drugs, my life was a mess. And yeah. when, I, when I stopped, I turned my life around. There's a reason these things are sinful and I had to learn it the hard way, but yeah. now I can at least deter people away from that lifestyle because it, there's nothing good that comes from it. All the negative things that have happened in my life have been associated around the things that are haram. Um, while we're on the topic, you get a lot of criticism. Um, I don't know if I want to explore that area, it's completely yeah, up yeah, to you, definitely. but I'm just curious, because I've never seen it. I've just obviously recently come across your content. Um, what, what sort of criticism did you get that you wanted to talk about? So, criticism. Or clarify in anything. A, in a Islamic sense, yeah. I've, I do get asked a lot, this happened from the beginning, like, if you're, if you're Muslim, how come you've got earrings and how come you've got blonde hair? Yeah. And in fairness, like these people aren't always necessarily hating. They might genuinely be curious. Yeah. They, a lot of the time they are that's because right. they might have heard that that stuff's haram. But I think I'm not knowledgeable enough to say whether it's haram or not. All I can say is that like, I'm on my own journey here. And um, the things I've introduced into my life and my progression with Islam have brought me to this point. And I'm always open to learning more. And I'm always open to improving my deen. Um, and I'm still far from perfect on that journey. I think I've come a really long way with the spiritual side of my relationship with God. And my, my constant thanking God for every single moment, even sips of water. And I feel like there I've become yeah. really strong. And uh, even my character side of Islam, like constantly wanting to just serve God's creation and these kind of things. Uh, the the rules based side of Islam, I'm still got a lot more work to do, 100%. Um, but I can only hope, inshallah, that that side of my Islam gets to the yeah, same yeah, level 100%. too. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And uh, I, and I'm sure that it will. So yeah, on on the question of things like earrings and, and blonde hair, like what would you say a good response to that is? Bro, you said it there, to be honest with you. Mm. And to be honest, the people that are wise and well-versed in the religion, they know that these things take time. You can't incorporate the whole religion in one go. And that's a quote, actually. If you, It says if you try to take the religion fully in one go, it's going to overburden you. Mm. So you can't do it. So the wise guys know all this already. Um, like, for example, Andrew Tate converted to Islam. 
what I'm trying to say? And he's still doing some things on the side, but mm. everyone quite forgiving because they know he just started, you get it? Yeah. Everyone's on their journey, do you get it? So I think most people, to be fair, know that you're on your yeah. journey and you're just trying to do your best. Um, and I would ignore the little yeah. one or two comments here and there, do you know what I mean? Um, it's about, one thing I like about you, bro, is, and I'm kind of similar in the sense where we might have li little knowledge, because I'm not a scholar or nothing like that, but the little knowledge that we do have, we try to internalize it and incorporate it. Like mm. for example, the gratitude that you mentioned mm. there, you try to incorporate that. And then the next knowledge will come and then you move on to that. Mm. One vice at a time, one, um, you know, overcome one vice at a time, basically. And don't overburden yourself, basically. Yeah, I like that way of looking at it as well, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, in reality, the majority of people probably think, you know what, he's on his journey and at least he's yeah. he's found God again. Like that's that's a miracle in itself. Um, and if I can, in the process of me becoming a better Muslim, if I can actually bring other people's Islam up, if I can like deter people away from sin, which I, I'm trying to do, then, you know, I, I can only be grateful for that as well. And it's like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm proud of that as well. Yeah. And also, I know my family are proud of that and that, and that means everything to me. And it's also a big part of our religion. Yeah, it's amazing, bro. You're doing well, man. Keep it up, man. It's not like you're doing a madness going around vlogging your sins, you know what I mean? Like yeah, going out there man. drinking and the, I know. Do you know what I mean? And you stop that anyway, but mm. I'm just saying that's not what you're doing. That's mm. a different story. Um, let's keep it upbeat, bro. Let's go back to um, yeah, some positive vibes, bro. Um, so it taught me, bro, how buying a wheelie bin started this whole ice bath journey for you, man. Yeah, it was just, <laughs> <laughs> it's still mad hearing that, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I was already making TikToks at the time. Yeah. Um, and I've had a little bit of success. Yeah. Uh, side note, I posted 130 videos before I even broke 1000 views. So that's to anyone who wants to go on a journey of content creation or creating anything in general. Wow. That's, that's the commitment right there. And I post in two, three times a day. So I don't give up. It's going to happen. Um, but yeah, um, I was posting videos, a bit of self-improvement, even jumping on trends, just learning the ropes on TikTok. Cause I knew- By the way, just mm. to add, if you don't mind, sorry to cut you off no there. No worries. All I was gonna say is that, by the way, at this time, we talked about, you know, you being, uh, doing the meditation, all that kind of stuff, mm. self-improving, developing yourself. At this point, you haven't become viral. Yeah, The exactly. point is you're having private victories. Yeah, it's all in the yeah, background. Yeah, so I think it's a good point on. to make that he's, privately making these victories, he hasn't blown up yet. Continue, bro. Yeah, on. so even, I think we should go stick on that theme of a timeline yeah. because it's good. Yeah, go for um, it. So we're talking lockdown, turn things around. Yes. I started to turn yes. things around. Yeah. Um, then after lockdown, um, I also got my ADHD diagnosis. That was huge for me because then I, I'm, I also got put on medication for a bit of time, which um, I've said this a lot on a previous podcast, but we'll just touch on it. Yeah. Medication is not in, in itself inherently bad. Staying on it for a long time is where it's gonna be bad. Um, but right now, if you need to stabilize yourself in the short term, medication could be the answer. For me, it helped me stabilize myself and manage to focus on my uni career again. Right. So for that moment in time, it served a purpose, not just the medication, but it made me learn about the natural ADHD remedies and, and things like that, things I was doing wrong. And um, yeah, turn my uni career around. That was that was huge. Uh, and that was came after lockdown. You failed your first year, you mentioned. I failed my first year, 0% yeah. attendance, yeah. zero things even attempted to hand in. I was just, didn't approach uni like it was uni whatsoever. And um, then yeah, the year after I'm doing my repeat year of uni, I'm failing again. Mm. And this is where I started to, where I say I gave up. Right. Because I was like, bro, it's over. I'm failing again. Yeah. Like, there's just no way. Like, if I'd failed this year again, my life is done now. Like, that's my last chance at life. But then I got my ADHD diagnosis, lockdown came, bang, turned it around, got 2 1 in that year. The year after that, I'm like, start to stabilize myself, yeah. get back into exercise. Um, and like I said before, nutrition, cold exposure, all of this. Then I'm becoming obsessed with all this self-improvement stuff. I become motivated again. Uh, I started a clothing brand, clothing brand going really well. I had my focus and I was also like donating 20% of that to doing projects where we'd meet up with kids from my local area and we'd give back basically. Yeah, and that wow. was, nothing ever made me happier than that in that moment. This was like, oh wow, I know I need to do something like this where I'm giving back and helping because this is the best feeling. I was like addicted to that almost. Um, so the clothing brand thing started going well, but then it got to a point where, you know, I was investing all my money into that. And I was thinking, is this really going to be the thing, the thing that I devote my whole life to? Uh, and then it got to a point where now all of a sudden, TikTok, 
is on the scene. Like not me personally, but right. people are blowing up on, yeah, on TikTok yeah. and I'm seeing that and I'm noticing that. Yeah. And all I remember the feeling clearly, yeah, I see all this stuff about TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. And the, the feeling that I had was, I cannot miss this boat. That was the feeling I remember because if you look at crypto and you look at NFTs, you see all this shit going around. People are like making so much money, bang, 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 bang. And you're almost there like, should I get involved? Is it too late? Bang. I missed the boat. Yeah. I missed the boat on crypto. Yeah. I missed the boat on NFTs, like a lot of people. Before you know it, it's too late. People are in and out, made their money. I've said to myself, I am not missing the boat on TikTok, yeah? I'm just gonna go make some TikToks now. And right. I actually started making TikToks for my clothing brand. That's where it first started. Okay. So I learned editing and all this, like because of the clothing brand that I had, and I started making videos for that. Right. But then it wasn't going so well, and I realized TikTok's a personal app. They need to see the person behind the brand. That's what goes well on TikTok. And then I had to make a decision. Am I giving up the clothing brand and building my personal brand? Or am I just gonna go with the clothing brand? What am I gonna do? Was you at this point like um, healed in some way? Would you say, or are you still going through your madness in the background? Nah, heal, heal, yeah. Like, okay. like, never, not completely. Yeah, but the, I'm like so, I'm so mend. motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm driven right, right now. Right, right. Right now, I'm a man on a mission. Yeah, yeah. I'm a man on a mission. I've also been heartbroken at this point, so I'm double man on a mission. Yeah. Like, I was like, nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming back. And also, like, I'd had a lot of friends that left me. Some, some shit went down in uni. Um, so I had a lot of hatred motivating me, a lot of pain motivating me. And that was powerful. That was a problem at that time because, like, it's also what actually threw me into doing ice baths because I was so much anger. I was like, nah. I wasn't motivated by love. I was motivated by, like, no, no, no. I'm getting in that tub for all the people that hate me, for all the people that left yeah. me, for the, for the ex, for this and that. Obviously it's all love now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. in that moment, it's like, looking back, it's funny because I, I was just so, all my motivation was dark motivation, yeah. but it got me it got to do what you, I yeah, did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm feeling good again. I'm driven, I'm motivated, and I'm just looking for the big thing that's gonna take me to where I know I was destined to go. Now I'm realizing again that, okay, God's given me another chance. This was another big motivator. God's giving me another chance. Mm. I ain't blowing that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. was like, now, okay, God, I've got to repent. And in the process of repenting, I've got to show you that it, you giving me another chance, it was a, it was a good decision. Like it, it was worth something. So that was a, a big part of my motivation. And then my family as well. Um, like I, I need to really repay them for all the pain. So yeah, like I said, man on a mission, bro. Like I was like, the, the work rate was wild. Um, and then even like, if I weren't working, I was only watching podcasts. I was only watching and feeding myself. Uh, Positivity. Yeah, yeah. you'll probably be able to relate to yeah, that. There's yeah, the yeah. times where you only want to consume like things that are giving you knowledge, yep. books. Um, so what happens? We're looking now at about, is it, it's 2022? It's okay. Jan January 2022. This is very recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very recent. Um, is when I started leveling up my TikTok. Right. Um, so I've had that 2021 clothing brand era. And then it yeah. make, I make this decision as we go into the new year, that clothing brand, goodbye. And now it's time for me to go into my personal brand on TikTok. I don't want to miss the boat. So I started posting every day, every day, every day, dead vids, viral, um, trying to do trends, cringe stuff. If you go back to my original TikTok, yeah. I, maybe I shouldn't be exposing this, but you know what? <laughs> It'll be inspiring to some people. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Seeing like the, the level of cringe in these vids, like one of my first videos was like Drake super fan challenge. And I like, was like <laughs> just performing one of Drake songs like, all right, you have to get the lyrics in here. Just trying anything, just trying do you know anything. what I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. knew it yeah. was uncomfortable. It was hella uncomfortable. I was, was, le it? I was learning the ropes. Um, so I just thought, you it's know Putting what? your reps in basically. Yeah, yeah, putting my reps in. And I have, don't, don't get me wrong, I had people saying like, bro, that is cringy. Like my friends that used to come across it. But I, all I thought was, you ain't gonna be saying that when I'm at the top of the hill. <laughs> um, yeah, so just kept putting the reps yeah. in. Yeah. Um, I finally, after a hundred and something videos later, I broke a thousand views um, and it was like a huge moment. And then I broke 10,000 views. It was mad. Mm. And then- um, Were well, you thinking to yourself, oh, something's working here now. Let me tweak this, let me, let me do that. Yeah, now I'm starting to know, like understand the format in it. Like, yeah. cause there is a form and I'm starting to understand trending sounds, hooks, um, what people want to see, something different, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, still learning the ropes very much so. And then um, I've started to learn a lot about Wim Hof at this time in my life as well. Okay, so, so at he, this moment you didn't come across the Wim Hof so uh, I knew, exposure. I knew, I knew, and I had been taking cold showers maybe for a year, right. but not like 
religiously and not with the knowledge of Wim Hof fully. Yeah. But at this point, like he'd become my main person now. Do you know what I mean? I had Dr. Joe Dispenza and then I had the, another guru, but Wim Hof was now like, I love this guy because yeah, I loved yeah. I loved the the world records like that shit for me was like yeah like he's doing superhuman feats and pushing his body to the limits and there was something that really drew me to that um, and yeah Wim Hof's on my mind and then uh, I'm talking about taking ice baths and filming the journey taking my first ice bath I'm talking about it with my friend couldn't find a plastic container big enough I went to B and Q and uh, just to see if there was something that I could put myself in there was nothing and then like you would have seen him on our previous videos my friend was like why don't you try a wheelie bin got the wheelie bin and uh, and, and the rest is kind of history I remember the first time I got in bro I was crying like I was I could only do that 10 seconds I did you put ice in straight away no 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 there was, was no say, ice yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. water and I was just dying bro um but <laughs> the video did well yeah I swear I was like no, this, I, I don't think I even posted my very first one because I was yeah. like embarrassed from it I yeah. thought oh no 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 that that's terrible um but no I, I just kept <laughs> filming it because it also looked visually nice to me like mm it just looked like something which was going to get attention as well. Like, you know, when you're scrolling, I'm in a red bin. Yeah, this is this is pretty mad. Um, and also here's a key point is that it, I was starting to feel benefits straight away. Mm. I was starting to feel unreal straight away. Mm. I was performing better in the gym. I was performing better in my life. My discipline was mad. Everything was mad. And I was feeling unreal straight after the ice bath. So I'm like, bro, I'm getting in there. And now I'm not even thinking about what I'm gonna say because I'm actually lit up. Like this yeah. thing with just lit a fire inside me where I talk with so much passion about the ice bath because I had fallen in love with it now. Um, and yeah, one video all of a sudden goes, goes crazy viral and then right, all of right. a sudden I'm the ice bath guy. <clears throat> and then basically I just blew up from there basically. Yeah, and then, I, and then I had to keep making ice bath content. And when I try and do something else, the algorithm didn't like me so much. But this is another thing like, People think ice baths are my whole life. Like, bro, there's more to me than ice yeah, baths. Yeah, yeah, as yeah, as yeah, we yeah. mentioned, like yeah. ice baths came after some of the other things. Yeah. And um, that's kind of one thing I struggled with at, at one time. Cause yeah, like Wim Hof might be like not being known as the ice man. Yeah. But if, for me, it's not the only thing like, and it's also like, uh, I'm glad that the impact is had, but I, I I wanted to speak about other topics too, yeah. but the algorithm didn't let me for a period of time. Right. So, but then because it got to a point where I was like, no, bro, I've made ice bath videos every day for time. I have to feed my soul in another way. And I know I've got more value to offer. I started to make videos about other things and then my numbers dropped. I'm like mad. They dro I've been through bare dips. Do you know, we, we talked about anxiety before, right? And um, TikTok social media is a playground for anxiety. You just said like mm. one video does well, one video doesn't do well, whatever. It's up and down. So you, how do you manage all that side of things? That's a good question as well. Um, the truth is, if I don't practice what I preach, yeah. if I don't do the meditation, the nutrition, the cold exposure, yeah. the breath work, the exercise, yeah. if I don't have every all of my habits ticked off, I will fall back to anxiety. Yeah, Anxiety is never cured. Anxiety. Maybe it is, I don't say never because everyone's different, but my experience is anxiety is not gonna go away forever because you always have to keep your habits up, right? Some people might be like, oh, but that's so sad. You saying I'm gonna be anxious forever. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you need to keep your habits up. You're not gonna get to a point where you've turned your mental health around by doing all the things that I said, cold exposure and meditation. And then you get to a point that I'm all right now. I can take my foot off the pedal. My experience is, Whenever I've stopped now doing them things, I'll go backwards. I'll start to get anxious again. So your question was about how do I deal with the anxiety of being a content creator and performance anxiety and, and all of this kind of stuff is like, the way I deal with that is I just have to keep practicing what I preach. I have to keep up with my ice baths. I have to keep up with my meditations. Otherwise it would consume me. And it has done at times, bro. There's been, there's been times where like, you know, for a whole week I'd be, bare anxious and like my family can tell and it's because I'm overthinking the fact that damn last week I was the guy now I'm not look at my engagement it's dead bro like no one even cares but then it will just take something as simple as like you know one person might recognize me in public and say bro you changed my life 
then I'm then I don't care about how my video performs after that. I'm like, bro, actually, remember that you're out yeah, here yeah. doing work that God's gonna be proud of and you're changing lives. So that's one way. That's one way I always fix it. Yeah. Like I was saying to you before, the 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 two things are make sure that I'm still keeping up with my habits. Yeah. And the other way is always remember what I'm doing it for. Yeah, always yeah. remember what I'm doing it for. Yeah. The virality is not what I'm doing it for. What I'm doing it for is to change lives. And if that one video helped one person, that's a miracle in itself. That's that's the job done. That's that's the goal complete. If one person finds it useful, bang, stop at that. There we go. It, the video was worth making yeah. and don't be asked about any virality. Yeah, 100%. You know I mean? and th I think you're right. I think it never goes away. But one of the, I think they did a study, I can't remember who did it, but they're showing that, you know, what's one of the determiners um, of being successful and it's the ability to handle stress over a sustained period of time. Mm. So the more you can handle stress, right, in over a sustained period of time, the more successful you're likely to become in the future. Yeah. So yeah. that grind is never going to stop. On the positive, right, a lot of good things came from the TikToks. Mm. You got a lot of opportunities. Walk me through some of them and when did they start rolling in? Okay. Um, so yeah, at first, I, when I went viral and stuff for the ice bath things, I was still at uni. Um, so I was actually finishing my final year at uni. Um, so that was what I was doing on the side. I didn't need to worry too much about it bringing in the money. Do you get what I'm saying? Cause yeah. I was still like student loan, still a student, all of this. But then I graduated. Alhamdulillah. And um, it dawned on me that I need to make a decision. I either need to turn this into uh, a job or I need to go and get a job and do it on the side. So I do have a pretty crazy story to be fair, bro, about um, about this decision that I had to make. Go on, um, let's hear it, man. All right, you know what, yeah? It's exclusive. Um, it is an exclusive, it's, exclusive, it's an exclusive. Yeah? Let's do it. It's exclusive because I'm gonna name drop this time. I've referred to the story, but I've not name dropped. Okay. But you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Um, so when I started to turn my life around, yeah. and like you said, I was having success in my personal life um, before I started posting on TikTok. One of the main things that went really well for me was I applied for an internship at uh, Pepsi, PepsiCo, right. who not many people know this, but PepsiCo own Walkers, Tropicana, Sensations, Doritos, like. Um, most of the stuff on, on the crisps and snacks and, and, and fizzy drink sales is owned by PepsiCo and the other half is owned by a Coca-Cola company, right? So yeah, applied for internship there and I got into the internship, which for, it was sales and marketing. And for me and my family at that time, that was, that was the biggest moment that we've had for like 10 years to celebrate. That's something that I'd done because it's like, wow, well, it's a blue chip company and they've actually taken me on board. They had like 10,000 applicants and they've chosen 10 people or something mad like that. Impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'm, I'm now proven to myself that not only have I turned my mental health around, but I've come back to a high performing individual that someone can believe in again. Um, so that was in my personal life, great. I do the internship. Absolutely smash it because um, an internship, right? The whole point of it is if you impress, they might give you the long-term job. They might give you the grad scheme. That's kind of what we're doing the internship for. We've got, we've got six weeks to impress them and show them that if you're gonna choose two people to stay on, I better be one of them people. So I knew that and I went in with that energy and my whole life became PepsiCo and I just wanted to absolutely smash it. So they'll give me the long-term job and then I'll, I'll go into having a pretty high paid job for starting salary, absolutely buzzing. Um, so I worked my ass off, bro, like nonstop while I was there and um, I ended up winning this huge challenge. It was amazing and I thought to myself, I'm statistically the highest performing person on the internship overall, or one of like one of two at least. And um, yeah, there's no way that they're not gonna give me the job, right? That's how I thought. And then I got into the next round, which was another uh, assessment center and another round of questioning and another presentation. I pu I've never performed so well at something in my life. It, and that day I was like, wow, mom, dad, I think I've done it, like it's crazy. One month goes by, I haven't heard from them still. I'm losing my head. Two months go by, I haven't heard from them still. And I'm just like, at least just tell me I haven't got it, man, because I yeah. can't even move on with my life here. And like, then one day they get in touch with me and I didn't get it. Didn't get it. I didn't get it. And um, yeah, but I can't lie, it, it broke me. And it came at the same time as when I got my heart broken romantically. 
as well. So it's so like- Double whammy. Yeah, yeah, literally, bro. And I'm, I remember crying to my mum like, I'm so sorry. I just felt like I'd let them down big time, you know? Um, and they're like, oh, it's fine or whatever. So when I say in, I was lit up by a darkness, dark side motivation, part of it was taking this L from Pepsi, right? And then they rejected me and I'm like, you know what? Fuck this, bro, I'm going all in. And all in for me then was, I'm gonna start posting on TikTok properly. That's the moment it came. Heartbreak, and I had to show them, and I had to show everyone that I'm not a failure, and I'm just gonna go and do something crazy. So I go all in with my TikToks. A lot of that is like, fuck Pepsi, fuck every single day. And I even still, still to this day, I was drinking from a Pepsi mug to remind myself, of that motivation, do you know what I mean? That's how deep I was going right, into it. Right. And even the notepad I was writing my manifestations and then stuff like that yeah. was a Pepsi notepad, just to remind myself every time I opened that, like they hurt me and I'm gonna show them. Right. Um, and then I'm doing my thing on TikTok. All of a sudden I'm forgetting about Pepsi because I've hit 100K followers. I'm like, whoa, I've done it, man. This is sick. Pepsi's a thing of the past. And then all of a sudden I get an email one day and it was it was Pepsi and they said um a spot's become available in the grad scheme and um we we you know thought of you and I'm thinking in my head yeah wow I can't believe that you know I can't believe that, that they've actually now offered wait it so again. you said f you Pepsi in previous videos no oh okay you didn't mention no, videos no, no, I was gonna no, say no, that no, okay no. that's fine no Right, oh, this is all in your head. All in my head. Right, all right, right. right. Fuck you, Pepsi is my motivation. Right, right. I thought you meant like publicly no, saying it. You not know publicly. Saying? Right. So they don't know how I've been feeling, that right. they broke my heart. They didn't know that necessarily it was that deep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a few months later, basically asked for me back and um, yeah. wanted to offer me the job then, right? It sent my head. So I was like, yeah, come on, let's jump on a call. We can talk about it more. And basically they told me that long story short, They've seen my content, obviously, because that's how TikTok works. Like I've got all these phone contacts and people who work there and stuff like that. They were aware, they've seen, you basically built a following of a hundred thousand people in a space of two months. Wow. Like, and we've turned you down for a sales and marketing job. You've shows you no marketing and short form content inside out and we've pied you off. Someone at Pepsi's getting a sack. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 like yeah. That kind of vibe. So <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they were like, yeah, uh, we seen that. Oh my God, that's so good. Blah, blah, blah. Like we want to have you back. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what was your decision? Yeah, yeah, Did you yeah, end up yeah. taking it or what happened? Yeah. So the decision making process was this. This is why it was so, so difficult is because, yeah. right. Option one, take Pepsi. And then in September, I'm gonna be making more money than I've ever made in my whole entire life, obviously, because I've never had like a, a full paid job and it was, it's a it's a blue chip company. Yeah. And then, you know, my whole career starts and then the year after I'm earning even 5K more and it was just crazy. So that that's option one, go with Pepsi. Option two is reject Pepsi and build my personal platform and keep building it. And even though it was bringing, bringing me in zero money, option two is bringing me in no money right now, but hold on to the fact that it could really be a bigger money maker than any um, get nine to five job. Do you know what I mean? Cause I'm going to be self-employed and the earner potential is more, but right now it's not. So do I trust the vision enough to, do I trust in myself and in God enough that I can make option two work, even though it's going to be a while to like earn the, the kind of yeah. money I'd get from Pepsi. You basically got a secure job here with a career blueprint laid out for you nine to five or you got one dream that has a potential but it's a risk that's what yeah. you're saying right and shall i give you a bigger snowball bro go on you know what was i couldn't get my mind over that hold on my all my content's about health and wellness yeah i'm trying to change the world and, and get people to stop consuming unhealthy products am i now gonna sell my soul that's how you viewed it to advertising fizzy drinks and sugary snacks to kids as my job. What, wait, bro, I'm, can I even consider that? Can I even consider that? That's against everything I believe in, against what my soul is telling me. And also I, the strongest feeling for me was, did God save your life, bro? Did God save 
your life and choose you to have a big recovery like you've had, a miraculous recovery, just for you to go and work for the enemy, for you to go and make the world a worse place. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it, bro, because sugar is the enemy. Say, holding you know back, I mean? I'm not gonna hold it. I'm not gonna hold back because, you know, to me, refined sugar is the enemy. Like that's one of the enemy. That's yeah. that's more addictive than any drug that I've ever taken. The sugar pandemic is a real thing. So I was knowing these things and I thought, ah, bro, yes, the earning potential and all that. Yes, the secure job. But I'll be honest, the decision was already made. The moment that dawned on me that, oh my God, bro, like I'm gonna be selling my soul. I don't know if I can do that. Um, the moment I had that realization, the decision was made. And I went into the phone call knowing that- You're gonna turn him down. Yeah, and I swear on it, yeah, there was no better feeling in the world. Really? There was no better feeling in the world. Then. And I said the reason, I said, look, like all my content is about health and wellness and changing the world and all of this. So I don't think I could live with myself. I said that, I don't think I could live with myself if I took the job and made my living from advertising fizzy drinks and sugar to what, kids. What was their response? Oh, like, yeah, completely understand. Uh, but it was a very quick conversation yeah, yeah. after that, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, of course. And see you later. But here's an interesting question. How mm. did your family take it? <sighs> that was tough. Yeah. That was tough. I can imagine. Because I, I, they were also excited by the TikTok growth and the 100K followers. But they saw, they were trying to imagine a world where I could do both. They were like, okay, it's, it's a no brainer. You're going to take the TikTok. Uh, sorry, it's a no brainer that you're going to take Pepsi. My family obviously thought, of course, you're going to take the Pepsi job. It's not even a decision that has to be made. And then that's your life sorted. So it was difficult. Um, at the same time, they said, yeah, we're still going to, you know, love you and support your decision. But that's what we would want. Um, so I had that pressure, but the vision was clear, bro. The vision was clear for me. It was like, nah, um, I've got to take this step. And it's, it's a huge step and it's come to me in my life for a reason. And it's going to make me go even more all in. And um, looking back, turning down Pepsi was the best decision I ever made. Ever, ever, ever. And that really ignited everything because that was me saying, no, I'm in this for real. So then when it came to, I actually graduated, yeah. right? Yeah. I'd already turned down Pepsi. I knew I'm in the deep end now. I, do I need to go and get a job or do I carry on with the vision? And what I did was just get a part-time job, like admin to support the vision. Yeah. Nice. And eventually lessen the days more and more until, uh, until let's say December. So about a year, about a year ago, right? I went full time, content. full time content creator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. About a year ago. So let's explore that a little bit. You said yeah. I can ask any questions. Yeah. Anything, bro. Anything. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Right. So you turned down a secure job, right? With a clear, you know. Um, step up every time, every year mm. to now, you know, going for your dream, your vision, right? And it's a big risk. You said the risk paid off. And how did it pay off? So what we're talking in terms of monetary values or gains or talk to me numbers, how much money you're making or yeah. do you know what I mean? Like give me okay. some, give us, give us some insight so, into that. Put it this way. I, I, I make a full time living yeah. doing what I love to do. Right. That is the goal. Of course, it still needs to increase. Yeah, of the course. The earnings yeah. still needs to increase. Don't get me wrong. But the goal is, right, I want to be able to be my own boss and do what I love to do, do my passion for a living yeah. and make a, make a very good living doing that. That's the goal. Yeah. I've got step one, do my passion. Uh, step two, be my own boss and make the living that I want to be making. Not yet. But I'm on my way there. Yeah, of course. But I'm still being able to do the first two and the third one to a sufficient level. Yeah. So I'm just very grateful for that. Another thing is like, if I can make sure that right now I take these steps and I make these sacrifices in the short term. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Of course, I do wish I had a bit more financial freedom. Yeah. But this is the decision I've made. This is the sacrifice is what I, the route I've chosen. Things are increasing constantly. It's always going up which is beautiful. That shows me I'm on the right path. 100%. Um, but 
Am I there? No. However, does that make me think oh, I might go get a real job? Absolutely not. Because yeah. if I look at people around me who, who have the nine to five life, they're just waiting for the weekend. It's Tuesday and they're like, oh, man, I can't wait for Friday, man. Can't wait for Friday. For me, every day is Friday. Yeah. Every day is Friday. Yeah. And it's like, what I mean by that doesn't mean a party every day or anything like that. What I mean is like, I wake up and I do whatever the fuck I feel like. Yeah. That is the goal. And I'm gonna keep doing that. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, you know, that is gonna be bringing me more money than a nine to five job could ever. It never, a nine to five is never gonna make you a millionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're never gonna make you a millionaire. Yeah, 100%. If you listen to all the millionaire stories, they had to sacrifice in the short term to commit to building a business and not taking a salary from it for a very long time until it started to catapult and they built it. And then they became millionaires by reinvesting and things like that. End of the day, I wanna be a millionaire. I'm going to be, inshallah. And this is my way of doing it, sacrificing in the short term. Yeah, no, no, makes sense. Yeah. But let me rephrase the question in a different way. Go on. So, what if someone wants to go full time content creator mm. eventually, and you did it a smart way, by the way. You mm. got a part time job, mm. and you wind it down to the part, to the point where you can leave a part time job. You can rely on the money coming in from mm. the content creation. Um, to rephrase the question, where did your income come from? Is it sponsors? Is it contracts? Oh, that's, that's what I mean. Sorry, it can get pressure, bro. It can become pressure that at times yeah. because like you said, there's no guaranteed wage coming in uh, until you land a brand deal, then yeah. you know that money is going to be coming in. So um, brand deals is only one way that you monetize. I've got my ice bath product. Have you seen that? I sell yeah, my own yeah. product. So yeah. that inevitably does well. You know what I'm saying? Because link yeah, in the I'm, description. Yeah, yeah. Link in the description. Yeah. I love that, bro. Um, I will link in my bio, but yeah. Copper tub, because 75 pounds change changed your whole life. Um, so yeah, that's another way, sell your own product, um, which isn't, in this day and age, it's not as difficult as people think to, to get your own product up and running, like with AI and stuff as well. Like, yeah. click with the fingers, you got your own business. Okay. Um, so that's one way. Brand deals is another way, like I said. Uh, affiliate marketing is one way, right. uh, which is basically you're selling someone else's product and you get a commission when you make a sale through the link in your bio yes my experience is it's very hard to make money from that oh really uh, from my experience unless you're yeah. massive like unless you're, exactly exactly so yeah that's not been very successful for me it's more the brand deals and then obviously nike yes let's talk about nike obviously man. nike yeah yeah so that, that was the the biggest bit of money i've brought in all year and that really set me up very nicely for the year and how did you collaborate with Nike? Like, what is it that you did? Is it something to do with the World Cup? Like yeah, the, the campaign with the Women's World Cup. So yeah. um, I actually do modeling and um, I'm with a modeling agency in, Obviously. in, in London. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been doing, doing modeling for a while, um, but I've not done like loads and loads. I've just done a few things here and there, a bit of extra money and things yeah. like that. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, like I got shortlisted for something with Nike um, and then um, I had to do a whole interview process and sending myself tapes. And because I had all this to do, to talk about, because I had all this proof that TikTok, I actually, you know, I went to the World Cup. I've made bare videos about football. I've linked football with self-improvement because it just felt natural for me to do that. Yeah. Um, and they love the ice bath stuff. Like they even wanted to, they told my story in the campaign about the ice baths and things like that. Like they really, really liked it. Um, and yeah, I got chosen basically to represent England for mm. the for the Women's World Cup. And I was the one wearing the England jerseys. It just shows a social media following is worth more than a Cambridge degree <laughs> in terms of monetary values. Let me give you an example. The influencer boxing thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. sooner or later, you might get called out for that, man. Uh, you know what, right? People <laughs> ask me, I, I don't want to fuck up my face, bro. I'm not going to lie. I can't be also getting a, like a broken nose or a this and that because I've already like fractured my eye socket growing up. Like I, I got assaulted one time, innit? That was just yeah. crazy. Oh. Um, so I've already had like, I don't know. I, even though I would love the glitz and the glam of doing the, the influencer boxing, I would love that. Even the uh, the press conferences, all of that. Yeah. So Misfits Boxing, KSI, <laughs> all of that hit me up. You know I'm next up for that. But um, <laughs> I think the only bit I wouldn't like it is really like getting getting punched and then having like some bruised up face when I'm making content and shit next. But yeah. you know what? But that's part of the content but creation. You know what? Yeah, it's cool. I think if I if I have the right trainer. I yeah. won't be getting hit. Do you know what I mean? Listen, when and they put that Benjamin in your face, bro. I know. You'd be like, yo, I don't need a trainer. I'm jumping in. <laughs> and even I did, I did Thai boxing my whole life as well. So from like age three, 
uh, to uh, about age 11, something like that. So I did it for a very long time. I do have a little bit of a background. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah maybe right. we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like what you said there about <laughs> the uh, the social media following is worth more than the Cambridge degree. Monetary values. We're not talking obviously education and all that kind of stuff. Whatever. Yeah. Just to clarify, don't drop out of Cambridge or whatever. Yeah. But you know what I'm trying to say. The I metaphor. know what you're trying to say. Yeah. Like uh, eventually, yeah. yeah. But also like the flip side is I don't want people thinking because I'm viral, I've got money. Yeah. It's not like that. Yeah, yeah. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the social media world and think because these people have got viral videos, they've got better money. Yeah, yeah. More time they're probably struggling because like you said, you're going paycheck to paycheck. You don't know when that next paycheck's coming in. Until you're actually established, being a full-time content creator is hard, bro. Mm. It's very difficult to actually be full-time content. Then if someone is full-time content, you know they're doing well. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, it's fucking yeah, hard yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, actually yeah, sustain yeah. that. So like, you can't just build the following. You have to be business savvy. The crazy thing is, yeah, that I've got a first class honors from a top yeah. 10 uni in the country and it's all gone to waste yeah. because I'm not using it. I'm a full-time content creator who doesn't even require a degree. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. now what? I'm in, I'm in 60K debt. Um, I'm in 60K debt. I've got a top degree but I've chosen to run around the park and film myself and shout motivation at my phone. Like, it's kind of mad when you think about it. Um, but uh, I'm not just a, like a, a, a stupid influencer. Cause people have put that in my comments recently. Like, oh, here's just another um, low IQ influencer who looks like a woman who doesn't know like anything, trying to educate us, right? Go and eat my first class honors from the uni of Bristol, my mm. friend. You know what I mean? I have also got that. Future plans. What's the what's the future hold for you, bro? What's the plans? What's the goal? The next what's the step, vision? The next step, I haven't even told you. Music. Music. Music is my next step. Yeah, 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 yeah. Expect some criticism regarding that one. I know, bro. I know. <laughs> but we can touch on that a little bit, to be fair. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It. That is my next step. Um, I have been writing music since I was very, very young. I actually have the first songs I ever written mm. when I was in like year three or something like that. I've still got them to this day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that has always been a big part of my life. But even my family life, like, um, yeah, it's like a strict Muslim family. Yeah. But my dad and his brothers were a breakdance group grow up growing up. Like music has been part of our, our culture and upbringing. And even, even my granddad, who the strict head of the family, rest in peace, he loved music and he played instruments. Yeah. So, you know, that's not me trying to justify, yeah, music is allowed in our religion or yeah. anything like that. I'm not really commenting on that. Right. But what I am saying is like, it was a big part of my upbringing, always has been. And then, um, yeah, when did I start to want to take it seriously? I think I always had in my mind that that would be the dream, you know, to just do what I'm doing now, but being able to spread that message with an even bigger platform that I've built through music and my music also be intended to raise vibrations yeah. and spread a positive message. And that's what it is. And I feel like right now it's hard uh, to not notice that there is a problem with music in this day and age and it's yeah. low, low vibration music. And what I mean by that is the message isn't positive enough. It's when these young kids around the country are singing the J Ho song, the devil in me, demon in me, I'm like, bro, are you fucking dumb? Mm. Like you've, you've gone away from music for two years, come back and made the first song that you release, the first line be devil in me, demon in me. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. You gotta be thinking about these things. So these are, this is what I like to undo is um, negativity in, in music. And I feel like all my favorite musicians are switched onto that and are releasing more positive music. And that's where I'm trying to come in and it's only high vibration music and it's bringing people closer to love and uh, motivation, inspiration. Um, so I'm ready right now, bro. Like the debut single coming out in the next few weeks. I've not started promoting it yet, but, yeah. but as you can imagine, cause I've got the content background. Yeah. Bro, the promo and the content is gonna be mad, like groundbreaking and shit. So I'm, I'm very excited to share that with the people, man. I know you're excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mind yeah. if I push back? I oh, don't mind, go Are for you sure? it. Yeah, 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 I'm sure, I'm okay, sure. Okay, okay. So you talked about you're gonna spread positivity, right? And the reason why you turned down the deal with Pepsi mm. is because you can't live with yourself. The fact that, you know, you're preaching nutrition, meditation, all that, and yet you're telling people to take refined sugars. Mm. Am I correct in saying that? Correct. Okay. So uh, what people are gonna say, and I'm just asking the question, how you answer it is fine. 
Uh, and I'm not here to judge anything like that. Don't get that twisted, yeah? Mm. So, but the criticism you're going to get is, are you not doing the same with music? Because music ultimately is forbidden. It's the instrumental thing, side of things, right? So why go down that route where, yeah, you're saying you're going to spread positivity, but you're spreading the instrument of the devil, if you like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Tough question, I know. Tough question because, you know, I never want to seem as though I'm like bending any rules or anything like that as well. Because yeah. I know in, in our religion, it's like sin is sin. Um, and I can only, the only way I can answer this, I feel like is I'm only going off my feeling. Yeah. And because I have a really strong relationship with God and I know inherently when I'm doing something, if this is like taking me closer to the vision, which the, the grand vision is be the person from our generation to, to really go in and change everything in the world, like the system, how everything is done um, and how, how people feel moment to moment. This is my bigger vision. And I know when something is aligned with that vision and when it's not, and because it's, it's a God-given feeling is how I feel. I know God has aligned everything for me to go and build this platform as big as I can. And I know he's given me a musical talent in that too, being able, being able to train myself to sing and write and being able to create a following that I feel, uh, create the following that yeah, I've built yeah, yeah. and sort of align all the conditions in my life for this moment. Okay. It just feels right, bro. And it feels as long as I'm using this platform to create the change I know I'm destined uh, to create or like the, the purpose yeah. Uh, of my life now, the reason God saved me yeah. is to really go and help the planet and yeah. um, could, could, wish these help him. Could you save the planet in an alternative way without doing music? Um, could, could it be your desires overtaking you here? Yeah, a bit? so that's the, that's the response. Yeah. That's the response would be, well, is that not the temptation? Is that not, you know, your test? Yeah. That's not the way I've understood it right now. Okay. But the, in the future, I'm open to if I was to ever look back and see, yeah. okay, maybe that was part of my test. But right now it all feels like meant to be. And it feels like there's a net gain, you, but there might be this wrong thing with instruments. And like, if, if is that clear cut by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, that's clear cut in the yeah. religion. Yeah. 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 Right. So by the way, I'm not religious for anything like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 But yeah. What yeah. I know I will tell you straight up. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's Haram basically. Yeah. yeah. So that's where I'm thinking. Right, why would God be aligning things like this and be giving me this feeling of this is what I go and I need to go and do? And I think it's because overall there's a net gain for the world okay. of me becoming put it like this. If Harry Styles turned around tomorrow and said, Listen to me right now, I need to sit down with the government because we, we need to change mental health policy. We need to bring meditation, cold exposure, this and that into year one. Then in year two, they need to learn about this in year three. Guess yeah. what? The government are gonna sit down at the table with him because they can't afford to look bad in the eyes of the public. Do you mm -hmm. get me? Mm -hmm. In the same way, I've mentioned this before, in the same way that Rashford affected food, food policy. Yeah. He sa said, called out the government. He then changed the world. He's changed the outcomes for a lot of kids in this country. That is my vision with all of this. Okay. And uh, I see music as my tool in in igniting that platform and being able to spread my message, but with a lot more people. And uh, music is it, also massively influential in what shaped my brain and motivated me and changed me. It's had a profound impact on me, bro, and, and my brain. I, and I can't ignore that, uh, it just has. So I know there's potential for music to change people's lives. So let me come and do that. If there's another way for me to come and change someone's life, let me come and do that. Uh, and then maybe it was in the future, something might tell me, okay, you know, you might can step away from it now or whatever, who knows? Um, but I just know right now, I, I can't ignore this very profound feeling. And in the past when I've had these feelings, I have had to go and act on it. And that's the reason I'm here where I am by acting on my feeling. And like we said before, faith plus taking action. When I get an idea, just go and do it. And that's you know, what I'm going to continue to do. Yeah. Throughout this podcast, I do appreciate your openness and how vulnerable you were willing to be and share certain things. So I really appreciate that, man. Any concluding topics, bro, that you want to cover? Any messages to your fans, haters or supporters? <laughs> um... 
I would say, I just want to give a message to say uh, anyone who's considering in their life, maybe I talk this one to the camera. Sure, yeah. go for it, man. All right. This message is to anyone who is in a, in a low place and has an idea that they want to pursue, but they've not yet gone in with that and they've got thoughts holding them back. Things like, oh, what are people going to think? Things like embarrassment, not wanting to put themselves out there. If I, if I didn't get over that feeling, if I didn't post that first TikTok, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't have made my family proud. Just, just imagine you can be that person from your family who everyone looks at when you go to the weddings, when you go to the, the birthdays and everyone knows, yeah, this guy's on his shit. Like he's sick. She, he, they are doing bits, right? Everyone knows that. So there's one thing people are saying to the younger people in the family, look up to that person. Just imagine you can finally make your parents proud. Just imagine you could even retire your parents. Just imagine how beautiful those things would feel, right? None of that will be possible if you let the worry and anxiety hold you back. None of that will happen. The indecision to make a step towards the journey and the vision, that's going to kill your dream off. You're never going to be able to achieve all these beautiful things. And if I let indecision win, and if I let fear and what people thought win, I would never hit a night campaign. I would never hit 100K followers. I never would have got a first class honors because people told me all these things weren't possible. And even when I said these were my goals, people told me, bro, that's kind of mad. How do you think you're going to do that? Overcome, don't listen to what they say. Take action, because you got this. If I can do this, anyone can. I'm just a normal guy who stuck to the vision. That could be you. I love you all. Stay blessed. Jeez. <laughs> Round of applause for that one, man. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely smashed it. Holmes, thanks for coming on the podcast, bro. It's been absolutely amazing having oh, you bro. on, man. Honestly, it's I've been really amazing. It. Wait, let me one last thing, yeah? Go for it, man. Hey, everyone hit up this guy's podcast, right? I swear <laughs> down, this, this was top tier. I really Jeez. enjoyed this. This is like... Yeah, the, the question and everything was just, it was just flowed so nicely. And I'm wow. really grateful that I had these questions and I got to share things I haven't shared before, bro. Wow. So really, you got to support this guy's thing, man. You're doing a beautiful thing, bro. Thank you, bro. You're doing a beautiful Thank you, thing. This guy, that's, that means a lot coming from <laughs> this guy who is, you know, he knows the, the game in and out, man. So much respect and love for you, Keep bro. Doing your thing, bro. And uh, no doubt we'll have you again in the future, man. Yeah, definitely, Don't man. forget me we'll when you're on a million more. subscribers, though, yeah? Oh, never, bro. Yeah? I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. <laughs> if you enjoyed the podcast, make sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. It helps the channel more than you know. With that being said, peace.